Good morning. This is Mr. Anger, and this is pace 1090 in math. Um, I'm actually recording this on the day after the Eagles here in Philadelphia won the Super Bowl. It's a Super Bowl 52, and uh, we have a delay today because of ice and snow. So I'm using this opportunity to do a video for this pace. I'm wearing my Philadelphia Eagles uh, green shirt. <laughs> I'm not a big football fan, but hey, this was once in a many decades win, so it's a big deal for my students and uh, friends here. So we'll uh, actually what we're going to do is talk about statistics. And I have up here, I don't know if you can see them very clearly, but these are the 18 scores that the Eagles had in their various games in this past season. Um, I do have to tell you, I left out one score. That was the 0 to 6 when they played the Cowboys and loss. So I'm, I'm leaving that score out uh, just because that would throw off what I want to do here. <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk about some things that uh, we can do to organize numbers such as pace test scores or it could be um, verses memorized, it could be ages of people in your church, I mean, all kinds of things that the pace is going to use. And, and, and if you've been doing the paces for a while, I think you did some of this back in sixth grade and seventh grade level. And uh, now this pace 1090 is a good uh, uh, review, plus it moves on and, and uh, challenges you a little bit more with statistics. I have two notes for parents or teachers. Uh, number one is when you went to school um, decades ago, statistics was not really emphasized much and was not really covered. Uh, so this may be somewhat new to you and you might feel like, uh, this isn't really important, let's skip this. Actually, um, those who try to set the standards for what does need to be covered in math for college and for industry and that kind of a thing um, have strongly been recommending that uh, schools put more emphasis on statistics. And so most textbooks, most curriculum have been doing this. I became part of the Common Core and even though ACE is not uh, trying to be Common Core um, compliant, it is, it is an important topic that is emphasized more and more. All right, so I'm going to um, take these particular numbers and show you some typical things that we can do with them and then hopefully clarify um, a couple of points that I know I, I had a student this year working through this pace and uh, he had a couple of questions and maybe we can clarify those, okay? So what I'm going to do is take these scores and we're going to put them onto a graph called a stem and leaf plot. So the stem is to the left here, the leaf takes off to the right, and we're going to just take all of these scores. The first number is the, like the stem, the tens digit. So I do have a score here in the ones, so I'll put a tens. We have some scores in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and there was one score in the 50s. So this is kind of neat here. We have five stems. And now I'm going to start adding the leaves. So we just go through right in order. 30, so I put the zero here. I'll cross it off. I have a 20. Okay, 27. I'm going to try to just go a little faster here. 26, 34, 28. Next column, we have a 34, 33, 51, 37. 31, uh, 10, 43, 34, 19, 15, 38, and 41. Okay? <clears throat> now that's just a quick way of organizing those numbers. And then what um, most statisticians will do is go back and uh, put these in order. So I'm going to put the 5 first, and then the 9, and then we have 0, 7, 6, 8. I'm going to put 6, 7, 8. And then let's see here, before I mess this up, 1, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 4s, 4, 4, 4, a 7 and an 8. Did I get them all? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so 0, 1, 3, 4, 4, 4, 7, 8. I'm just going to switch these two, 1 and 3, 
and then we have a 1. I should have 18 numbers here. Let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yay! All right. So we have 18 numbers in here, and that represents all 18 of these. Now I can easily start analyzing and answering these questions. So at the very beginning of the pace, it talks about range. Range is the difference between the smallest and the biggest number. So the smallest number is 10, and the largest is 51. So we can just subtract 51 minus 10. So the range in this case would be 41. Now to find the median, we have to count in. If there's an odd number, we can just count in and find the middle number. Okay, that's easy. If we have an even number, then we have to find the two numbers that are right side by side in the middle, and then we'll add them together and divide by two. So let me illustrate that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, and then if I counted backwards from here, the ninth number in would be right here. So my two numbers are 31 and 33. So I'll add those together and divide by two. So the median is 32. Several of these start with M, so I always remind my students, median is the one right down the middle. If you're driving on a highway or a road and it's divided, there's a median and it's right in the middle. Okay, so median, middle. Um, <clears throat> let's find the mode. That's actually another easy one. And that is we add or we find the number that's repeated the most often. This one's actually kind of easy to see. We have three of these fours here, so the number 34 would be the mean, excuse me, mode. Did that wrong, all right? And uh, then if I take my calculator and I add up all of these numbers and divide by 18, I get 30.6. I'm pretty fast, aren't I? Obviously, I did that math ahead of time to save some time on the video. All right, so the mean is adding up all the numbers, divide by how many numbers. It's, parents, what you would have just called an average. One more note, parents, I would say, please let your student use the calculator. All right, this obviously is an exercise where, where that would be necessary. A little bit later in the pace, it talks about a key for a stem and leaf, and that is that we take a number like, uh, you know, two or one, one zero, and uh, they draw a line in zero, and then they say that equals 10. Okay, so that means the number on the left is the tens digit, the number on the right is the ones digit. And I don't know that it's, I don't know that it says that it has to be a particular, like I think I could have done, you know, like maybe 4-1 equals 41. The reason that's important is a little bit later in the pace, it has another leaf on the other side of the stem. And so the stem is going, or the leaves are going this way, but the stem is still down the middle. So then you would take the number, like maybe there's a number here, seven. And so you would say seven slash two actually equals 27. And that means the number on the right of the dividing line is the tens digit. And then the number to the left over here is actually the the leaves, okay? <clears throat> Not a big deal, but that is a little confusing. That was something that actually a little new to me, okay? <laughs> um, if we were to turn this sideways, you could see kind of like a graph here where these numbers are going up. So let me get rid of the key here and just show you a real quick graph where these are the numbers in the 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and we could put X's to represent how many numbers are in these ranges. One, two, three, four. And then this was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then two scores and a one score. So now you have a graphical way of looking at it um, and seeing that the most scores are here in the 30s. There are various ways of doing these. You could even do um, lines or boxes, towers, things like that, and, uh, and illustrate um, how this turns out. 
I don't think you'll find this hard. The two main goals, one is to learn how to read graphs like this. And there are a lot of, um, a lot of questions coming up when you do achievement tests, like the California achievement test, or maybe do another end of the year test. And they'll include statistic type things. Um, and then making your own graphs and illustrating data. So it is, uh, it is kind of a fun thing to do and it's a practical way of using your calculator and uh, organizing it quickly using a stem and leaf plot and then coming up with these answers. So if you were to say, what was the average score that, uh, of the Eagles? Well, you actually have a couple numbers you could choose from. You could say their average score was the middle one, 32, or you could say it was this 30.6, although they never score a decimal point, okay? Or you could say it's the score that repeats the most often. Now, still, that kind of gets you in the right zone. You're in the area here, 30, 31, 32, 34. But the point is, you have to choose the answer, okay? And uh, you have to choose the answer that makes the most sense. So you could say, on average, the Eagles scored about 32 points per game. Or you might say 34 points was kind of right in the middle or was their most frequent score. Um, even though they won, what was their final score in the, last night in the Super Bowl was 41. That was way above their average. Okay, so you can start interpreting um, some of your answers based on what data we've collected and analyzed here. But the bottom line is scientists and statisticians use charts like this all the time but still they have to choose what answer best communicates what they're trying to, the question they're trying to answer. I'm gonna do one more video and that is about um, illustrating uh, with pie graphs and uh, some tips for doing that that's a little bit tricky. And so stay tuned for that video next.